Let me quickly show you some new stuff and then we can talk. This is not my building. <laughs> Uh, but it's one I love dearly, and it was designed by Eric Mendelssohn. It's the Einstein Tower, and it's in Potsdam, Germany. I dragged Paul to see it once because it's so beautifully sited. It's a, it's a real lesson in urban integration, even though it's not in an urban site. The point of showing it is that had Eric Mendelssohn had the computer uh, stuff that we got now, uh, I would have had to do something else. <laughs> this is uh, the first models of the Beekman Tower that you can all go see down near City Hall, so I'm not going to uh, elaborate. Uh, it, it's a developer building, and with, which meant it had a very tight pro forma it had to be built for a certain amount of money uh, and almost got cut in half because of the, the recession, but fortunately it, it continued. Um, I, I wanted it to be a New York building. I wanted it to feel New York. I wanted it to um, have some feeling and uh, the planning and all of that was, we had an advisory group who advised on most of the apartment buildings that are built in, in the city. Um, the idea of having the apartments have a bay window so that when you walk toward the window, you walk into the bay and you see in both directions, uh, like walking out into space, gave me the opportunity to manipulate the facade. And instead of lining it up at each floor, I, I, I moved them subtly along the facade to get this uh, uh, fabric kind of feeling. And working with the uh, subcontractors and the, and the computer technology, we were able to build this building within the pro forma of a normal, uh, what, whatever that is, normal economic package that a, an apartment building in New York requires. That's the computer, and that's the real. Working with this very elaborate, this is an aircraft uh, uh, software uh, made in France that we've adapted and, and modified for the construction industry and allowed us to detail every piece of it, rationalize every piece of it so they could be built in real time for real budget. The curtain wall uh, finally came in at the same price as a normal building a normal uh, flat curtain wall. And these are pictures of it as it is. It is a New York building for me. I'm very proud that it is. <laughs> and that's one of the bay windows, so if you walk out, I'm afraid of those elevators, so I haven't been up myself. <laughs> <laughs> the flat side, everybody thinks, was done because of, the, of economics, but it wasn't. It was an architectural uh, move or gesture. I wanted to have a sharp um, cutoff that facade faces south so it gets uh, direct sun and doesn't get the shadowing that the other uh, sides get. You've shown us, actually. Um, and if I can begin by going back to Beekman Tower. If 
for a minute. Uh, building a serious, ambitious piece of architecture that uh, a New York City developer will actually accept has always seemed to me kind of like you know the holy grail of architecture, the sort of, <laughs> or like those mathematical proofs that nobody can actually do and everybody tries to do. Um, and yet you seem to have done it here, and that this has been uh, it's an extraordinary building that has been brought in apparently at uh, the cost of uh, any of the ordinary pieces of crap we see all the time in well, New York. So tell us more about how you achieved that. My in, client in, told me that, so I'm, okay, I'm, right, right. I'm assuming he's telling me the truth. Right. Uh, well, well, how you achieve yeah. it is, uh, first of all, you've got to uh, be sure that you're going, you make that an a, a absolute goal. goal. You can't right. do anything else. You've right. got to achieve it. Uh, and you, before you take it on, you've got to find out whether it's possible. Mm -hmm. So I always analyze these projects pretty well to right. make, make sure there's a, a whisper of a chance to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to take more responsibility than architects normally tend to do. Okay. Uh, and because of this fancy software I've been using for 30 years now, we're able to uh, be very precise in what we want built. Mm -hmm. And so we can uh, communicate with the construction people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a negotiation over time. It's right. not, not, you put it out to bid, you get a, the normal way, you get a bid and you're off to the races. Okay. This is a negotiation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you work with them to uh, work within the parameters. I mean, everybody's got to be willing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. want to do it, right. including the owner. Right. <laughs> and uh, I think it's just the precision of it, taking the, the risk out of it. So you can, in effect, measure things more tightly than yes. somebody else. Yes. So can. you, for instance, there were, in a, in a construction project, there's requests for information. Right from the, the builders. Mm -hmm. uh, each one of those usually ends up in a change order and mm -hmm. an added cost. We had fewer than 100 on the... On the Most New York apartment renovations have more than 100, yeah, I think, yeah. actually. <laughs> so so no. you, take the, you take the waste out of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? We used concrete. Uh, it's called Icrete. It's a formula concrete that has less cement. So the building has... 50% less cement. The carbon footprint of the concrete is 50% of what a normal concrete building is. And that's a new material? New material. Mm -hmm. and, and there are several out now like it. Uh, the Freedom Tower is being built with it as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. It sets up quicker. Uh, the loads that are delivered in the, you know, those trucks with the barrels rolling, mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. they have a slump test. Uh, a lot of those get sent back. About 20% don't make it, mm -hmm. so there's a waste. In this case, none were sent back. Wow. So you eliminate that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You eliminate change orders. And you make a more efficient building project. 